<laughs> Peace. <laughs> Happy now. Now's the vibrate, of course. Not going too far in the future. Not going too far in the past. Right now. Now's the vibrate. Matter of fact, and I like to be very transparent. So the reason why I was laughing because I was just about to do this video. Uh matter of fact, and I keep it real, like as far as like I don't do takes as far as like, you know, I just go with the flow of things. But there have been uh times where I've tried at takes in essence where like, you know, something mess up very badly, quote unquote, I mess up on a level that I'm displeased with. So I go back to it. But those when I do like more than one take in most essences, that's uh usually a sign that that video shouldn't be done in that moment. I'm not in the right, you know, vibration to deliver that message. Cause there's a lot of times I catch where it's not so much the message shouldn't be delivered, but the vibration I'm in, uh, and not to say that I'm in a vibration, but there, for some things you have to be in such a, you know, uh, such a balance and, and high level of consciousness to be able to share, you know, that way you don't get none of your ego ilk on it, you know what I'm saying? But again, see, long story. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna make this a think fast video, but then I was like, ah, you know, it's something that, that I could end up talking on on a broad level, and it's not so much a think fast, like, so I just had to keep it real with that. You know, I, I lost track of the vibe with my think fast videos. Like I would, you know, they started from, just as soon as I catch a little sharp little thought or anything, it's like, ooh, camera on, like, think fast. Like, you know, I, I ain't had no time to write this up, none of this, like, think fast. But then it started becoming something where, you know, uh, where I started turning my short videos, so videos that I felt was gonna be short, you know, I turned them into Think Fast. And, and in essence, not necessarily being a video uh, that I just, you know, did right on the fly, but, you know, I started like, in essence, preparing my Think Fast and turning them into short videos. So I gotta get back to making the Think Fast a really, you know, like how I started them. But anyway, just want to speak to the importance of etymology and gematria and i'm just going to share an example of how uh you know gematria you know shares you know sheds light on the truth of our you know of our existence now gematria is basically the taking of uh you know certain letters and numbers and matter of fact before i get into this this is definitely a cool book to check out stonehenge and the Great Pyramid, Window of the Universe by Bonnie Gaunt. You know, and it's basically a book that uh, speaks on the gematria of the Bible, like how, you know, the deeper meanings of the Bible, because I tell everybody, you know, of course you could probably find some little moralistic stories and, you know, get something from the words at face value, you know, like Peter did, Peter robbed this one to pay Paul, and, it, and then it's like, the moral to that story, you shouldn't steal from it. You know what I'm saying? Of course you could get those type of morals and those type of, uh, you know, learning situations from the Bible, but it's a deeper, you know, situation. It's stories of things that's moving in internally, as above, so below. It's stories of the macrocosm and the microcosm, but on a deeper spiritual level. And when I say deeper, I mean, it's the truth of our existence, you know. We are deep in our true existence, so, you know, for the little shallow lessons of being a human, you know, and being a human is a part of our existence as well. We're not going to sit here and be like, oh, yeah, I'm everything except for the vessel that I'm sitting in, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I, I am uh, more than just that vessel, you know, we've been tricked to think that all we are is this vessel, you know. But Gematria is basically, uh, you know, uh, the, the word, the root of the word in essence is like geometry, ge gematria, but it's just basically how the numbers correlate to certain uh, letters. And for the most part, you got the Hebrew letters that break down into certain numbers, and you got Greek letters that break down into certain numbers, and you got our alphabet, which, I mean, there's different uh, systems for different, you know, but I haven't come across anything, say for instance, like a number system for Sanskrit, stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure that uh, that exists. But just speaking to right now, uh, you know, dealing with, you know, the, got the gematria 
want to speak on the gematria of uh, Jesus name and showing you how you know again for one this this figure is more about so it, more so I'm about to show you how the gematria kind of proves in that sense what the energy is really about you know what I'm saying because you know it's about the Christ energy it's not about a person named Jesus you know what I'm saying for one the letter J did not exist on you know, those times and proven so which you know as uh melanated people uh com you know in uh indigenous uh peoples like the, the the knowledge goes way far back so so to say that our knowledge goes far back and then even when you come across uh so you get into the greek vibes in which that's still uh you know, melanated people in essence is just mulatto people. A lot of people don't know that Greek people is like uh so if you ever been to Louisiana, you know, and uh they call some people red and yellow and all that, you know what I'm saying? That's basically what a uh you know what the Greek people were in those times, you know, and that just got whitewashed, especially as the Romans got into that situation. But you know, you see uh well this is basically uh, Lord Jesus Christ, and it's spelled, you know, from top to bottom. You see right here. Hope y'all can see good. But like, you know, the letter right here is like an I, you know, standing for iota in Greek. Matter of fact, y'all familiar with the Greek? Uh, you know, if you dealing with college and fraternities and all that, you know what I'm saying? That's another thing too, where the brotherhood of fraternities, or I should say brotherhood and sisterhood of fraternities and sororities is cool, but you know, uh, for sure on the fraternity level, you know, that, that vibe kind of stems from that overly masculine, you know, man's club, keep the women out type of vibe, you know, for which, again, you know, it's something that you could you know, we alchemists, you could transmute those fraternities and sororities into something that's, you know, good for you to use, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm good, my brother, appreciate you though. Uh, yeah, so the fraternities, you know, uh, use the Greek word, so, you, know, you see the iota, and I could uh, use my own writing and stuff like that to say, like, well, you know, to, so I'd be using the book verbatim, but I would just be being fraud and fake by like, oh, let me just write it down just for the sake of seeming like, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I owe the I, I J. Matter of fact, you don't see anything starting with a J. So it's even for the Greek people. You know what I'm saying? You don't see no letter J in there. You know. But, uh, Either way, you know, you start to see that the Christ is the true energy. And when you do the gematria of the Christ, uh, the name Christ, with the Greek words, you know, the Greek representation of it, it comes out to, uh, yes, 1480 or 1480. And then when you break that number down, it goes into 13. And you know how we talk about, like, the 12 apostles and Christ. It's the number 13, you know what I'm saying? Where even the name, you know, goes to the new numerical value 13. And 13 is kind of like that, that birth, kind of like a, uh, like a transformational number. Kind of, I see it from my own interpretation. Interpretation, I feel like it's the, you know, the, the birth, birth slash death number and more of a, uh, like the foundation of birth and death in essence or the foundation of transformation you know and transforming you know you're transforming when you're being born you're leaving from being something else and when you're you know dying i'm black for a better word they're both transitioning but you know for birth and death you know they're both are transformational states you know what i'm saying you're just like a you know the caterpillar that transforms into the butterfly you know the caterpillar in essence dies and the butterfly is born you know but the number 13 and then two you see uh how uh, america plays with this little number where 13 colonies and 13 stars and you know, 13 stripes on the you know flag things of this nature and then on the dollar bill they got all these little sim symbolisms of the number 13 you know because they're trying to use that same energy you know uh 
the same, uh, you know, basically like word magic using these uh, words and numbers for their benefit, you know what I'm saying, to oppress. That's why they work with Saturn a lot because they try to use the the negative aspects of Saturn, you know, the, the parts of Saturn that, that binds us and keeps us away from our, you know, from our soul, you know. There's no bad or good, they just use a certain whole, you know, they just use a certain energy on a certain pole of, you know, Saturn. Saturn got the, you know, not just Saturn, but, you know, we got the poles of energies, you know, and it's no good or bad, it's just uh, two different sides of the energy, you know, in essence. But again, uh, back to the Christ. So the Christ number is represented as 13, you know, and uh, 13 simplifies into four. You know, four is the foundation, you know, the root, four petals on the root chakra, you know what I'm saying? Where was uh, Christ born? Christ was born in the manger, you know, the, uh, the root chakra, you know, the, the manger is around nothing but animals, your animalistic nature, you know, shit, all that. That's where your root chakra is. Root chakra has four petals, and that's where Christ was born. And your Christ, you know, Christ, uh, what it is, the Christ all of the, you know, that Christ energy that that uh, sits in the Kundalini, you know, at the root chakra, rises up. You know what I'm saying? Then cycles and descends back to the root. You know what I'm saying? Back to the number four again. You know the the, the birth and death. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like a. a Again, just like a transformation, but transformation through that birth and death cycle. And again, I'm saying birth and death, you know, it's no real, you know, if you're, if in, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. You know, a lot of us say this, but then we go along with things that disagree with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it cannot be created nor destroyed. We're not going anywhere. We never came from anything, you know, like we always been, you know, that's hard for your mind to fathom your mind is linear you know it has to I fact it, it kind of has that Saturn energy to it and that's more so if you're dwelling heavily in the logic but I still feel like even with the feminine vibes of course it, the feminine the right brain makes it fathomable to believe how you know how uh, you know eternal and infinite things are but at the same time even you know even that as a whole still has its limits compared to just being in spirit and being outside of the brain with that that whole concept you know like not trying to intellectualize it and conceptualize it into something you could grasp because it's you know it's more than something to grasp <laughs> but anyway so two you see the the jesus and i spoke to this before you know jesus are yeshua and then also you got the vibe of the yes so you hear a lot of people speak on the etymology you know like how the word Jesus speaks to yes, and the reason why they hit you with the Jesus vibes with a lot of things is for you to just agree with, you know, to be like yes, to be like a yes man to all these different things, and basically you being a yes man to the damnation of your soul in essence, you know what I'm saying? I had to use that the biblical sign of word, the damnation of your soul. <laughs> I felt like a preacher when I said that. <laughs> but you know, it's, you know, it is what it is, though, it's, you know, making you a yes man to, to Jesus, you know, and sitting around waiting for somebody to come back when that character don't even exist in the sense of the way they presented it to you, you know. But two, you got the God Shu, you know, yes, Shu, well, and then Shu, the God of air, you know what I'm saying? Shu is the God of air that's in between, uh, what it is, uh, Newt or Nut and Jeb, you know, uh, you got, I forgot which one is the firmament and one is the ground and one is masculine and one is feminine. Can't recall in the moment and I'm not going to slaughter the information, but you get what I'm, like the Egyptian uh, depiction where you got like the, you know, you, you've seen, you just seen the picture of like the, the person like, almost like they're in a yoga position with their hands touching the ground and they kind of got like a little dome shape in the middle of the body that's like the one that's representing the firmament. Then you got the ground, you know, that's the one that's representing the earth. But again, you know, and Shu is the one in between, you know what I'm saying? When you look at, you know, like uh, in essence, I would not say to a certain extent in between, but when you look at, all right, what I was going to say, the air, and the air also correlates to oxygen, you know, which is, 
We're breathing in oxygen. What's the atomic number of oxygen? It's eight. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, yes, you were. You know, some people know it's Jesus. <laughs> but, you know, yes, you were the eight. You know what I'm saying? And then that, that, that energy, you know, coincides with... Uh, With the, the name Jesus in essence as well, you know, but again, uh, but for the most part, again, they trying to make you believe in this certain type of character or like this certain person. I forgot the name of the book, uh, but there's a book like the the 16 Crucified Saviors. But it's basically, uh, it's a book that speaks to all the different stories of you know, where Jesus was derived from. And I tell people, you know, it becomes a certain insanity for us to, like in all parts of our life, we look to the source for the true information. So, you know, you know, when we say, for instance, even in school, they tell a person to write a, a, a essay or some type of report and they like state your sources. You know, and when you go into your source, you know, they also tell us, you know, don't just stop right there at Wikipedia, because Wikipedia is not the source in essence. It's a place that derives information from a bunch of sources, but it is not the source. So, like, for a lot of the Christians to take that, that book as the end-all, be-all, when it's just 2,000 years old, and knowing that the story of Jesus comes from, like, 16 previous stories, 16, you know, 16 previous stories, you know what I'm saying? So where would it make sense for, you know, everybody to go along with the 16th installment of a story? I would want to know what was the first story, because I, I know one thing, you know, just like the experiment of uh, where, you know, you got a classroom of 30 people and it, it tell one person to, you know, pass the message down. And by the time you get through the classroom, this is a classroom of 30 people. This is not the whole world. <laughs> this is a classroom of 30 people. And by the time you get to the end, you know the the messages to start it it's not to say that all messages get extremely distorted over time but let's just say that it, it, let's say it, it's safe to say that you know you're getting closer and the more full of truth the more you get to the source of things you know what I'm saying you could you could ask somebody about Universal. What you think about Universal? What was Universal born? What he did? Well, you could ask somebody, but you know, you could get the real story if you come to me. You know what I'm saying? And ask me. You know, and the same thing on our spiritual path is like, you know, we got all these books, we got all these different reflections of ourselves and stuff of this nature. But you know, we got the true inner source within ourselves. You know, all you have to do is ask yourself these questions and you get the answers to them. Of course, you gotta meditate and clear your mind and get all that, you know, the ego and the little mind junk out, but we are the source itself in general, you know what I'm saying? We, we move into a place where I won't even have to do these videos on this phone, you know what I'm saying? I could. Though we'll have like a little telepathic message board that we know, which is already there, but we just not, uh, you know, as tapped in as we once were, so it's not as vivid, you know what I'm saying? But we get into a place of uh, using less of these technologies and stuff like that, you know, uh, and tapping into our, uh, our own spirit and our own energy. And I forgot where I started that tangent. <laughs> But, you know, probably speaking on uh, passing the word, I know I was talking about like uh, going to the source of information. That's what I was at, you know, where the source is, where the information is. So again, you know, you see where you get the, the Yeshua, the air, the oxygen, you know, the breath. And what they sometimes call the breath, the eternal breath, you know, eternal breath, you know, eternal or infinite and you know what a number eight is is the in infinity sign you know just right side up you know so but and and, and basically though just seeing a deeper meaning in you know words and how to they break down into number values you know dealing with our alphabet uh num with our alphabet system the greek alphabet system hebrew you know that's the main ones that's used through a lot of divination systems is you know uh divination through gematria and numerology you know is those uh 
those alphabets. And without uh, going too far into it, you know, I'm about to fall back, you know, but just showing again, you know, uh, let's see, you got this, uh, this Matthew verse, Matthew 1.23, you know, and uh, it says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive a bear, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall come and shall come his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. The number, and, and so basically that little verse, so basically behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I kind of said it funny at the end, but point blank, uh, when you break down the gematria of this verse, it breaks down into 8,000, 880 you know which you know you take the zero off is 888 you know what i'm saying and again you get that that eight value now with that vibe also though let's see something right quick i'm trying to uh hold on let me do some quick math right quick y'all All right, I'll try and see two with eight, because, I mean, of course, you know, the triple eight uh, stand, you know, stands firm in essence, because that's the first number you get, but you even still break down that number, you know what I'm saying? And when you break that down, it goes into, you know, eight plus eight plus eight, it's 24, 24 breaks uh, down to six, you know? So it's also that energy, which I guess you can see the six energy is being tied to carbon, you know? So the carbon is the existence, you know, and breaking down, see, breaking down the whole, just that, just a word breaks down into so many different energies when you go into the numerology of it, you know what I'm saying, or the gematria of it and getting into the numerology of it, you know. Numerology is more so looking at just the, the energies that's behind the numbers, you know, without the, you know, without letters being attached to it. But... You know, that's basically it. That's all I wanted to share. As a matter of fact, that's why I said I, I was going to make it a Think Fast video, but I was like, nah, I know this is the type of subject that I'm going to expand past with the general point, you know, the general uh, basis of what I want to share. You know, as a matter of fact, again, good little book. You no know, breakdown, you no know, biblical text. And, and biblical text and just showing, too, like a... It, goes to breaking down the me measurements of Stonehenge and the pyramids and you know good stuff you know, certain uh, let's see height of the Great Pyramid and pyramid and, you know uh, the measurements you know of, of the pyramid stuff like that so you have Bible verses well, when you do the gematria of the word, it, it has the measurements, the base measurements of the pyramid. And then that next verse within one of the books, you know, uh, I have the the, me the the height of the pyramid, you know, like it goes in line explaining all the, and then as above, so below, the, 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 the base measurement around the, the pyramids, and say for instance, not this verbatim, but just for example, the base pyramid, the base measurement around the bottom of the pyramid may be the exact the distance between the earth and the sun. You know, it breaks down so, you know, uh, say for instance, you have uh, the height may equal to three, uh, three million, in some way, form, or fashion, like 365, you know, it'd be in there which would be symbolized as 365 days. And it's also 365 million light years of this thing being from the other, you know what I'm saying? Like it breaks down on, on multiple levels. So when you see and hear people like, I almost feel like it's a cat in a hat story the way some people just look at it. Like Peter walked down the street. Jesus made fish. Jesus walked on water. <laughs> It's like, uh, you know, of course I'm being facetious, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, 
it's it's a deeper meaning than just these names that's given to you. Because again, uh, to really look at it at face value, you know, the the English language wasn't always in existence for an English interpretation to be the end all be all for the word of God. You know what I'm saying? How could you know uh, the youngest? one of the youngest languages you know and i say one of the youngest because you know i feel like there's multiple dimensions things are constantly being created you know so they may have some language come after english whether for, you know whether it be better or worse and better or worse you know lack of a better word but whether it be beneficial or unbeneficial you know uh another you know another language could be created but I just say the youngest to our knowledge in this moment, you know, you know, why would the youngest, the youngest language be used to explain something so ancient? You know, our subconscious existed before even some of the ancient languages, you know what I'm saying? Our subconscious just dealt with energies, you know, energy and motion, emotions, you know what I'm saying? That's why, emo that's why reading our emotions is so important and why why a woman being tapped into her emotions she she's tapped into intuition which makes her more psychic or more connected to source you know what i'm saying energy and motion not nothing to do with no damn words you know which are spells or spelling words you know what i'm saying casting spells you know it, it's nothing to do with with that you know that's why you know in essence the that's what the bible is is a spell book it's a magic book you know you know uh, and just allegory, you know what I'm saying? Allegory and astro theology, you know what I'm saying? Basically, like just a story of how the macrocosm and microcosm work. And somebody just decided to put it into, you know, regular little human names and stuff like that, like Paul, Peter, and all this. And again, it was uh, partially to have some type of literature to uh you know to to tap into spirituality to a certain extent but for the most part when constantine and uh you know when he got together with all these different you know popes and different people and they had the nicene council twice you know two different nicene councils what they had in mind wasn't the spiritual liberation of all existence you know <laughs> that's why i tell people of course you could find some type of spiritual liberation within the bible but just think about the basis of it and why it was you know what, what people had in mind with delivering those words to us in the way they presented you know it, like your spiritual liberation at at the highest like your highest you know the most you could be spiritually liberated wasn't in mind when they were, you know, uh, editing, taking out the Apocrypha and the Book of Enoch, you know. You know, as a parent, you know, as parents to our kids, you know, and as a parent to your kids, you know, you could look at that as, you know, as God, you know, the fullness of God to us, you know what I'm saying, in essence. I'm trying to teach, I'm trying to teach, you know, uh, the youth, I'm trying to teach them, you know, everything I know. You know, and, and and on levels when they're ready for it as well. You know, so that's another thing. You know, like going from kindergarten to uh, you know, on up. You know, you learn at different levels, but at the same time, you still. Uh, and when I say that, we learn at different levels, but not on the levels that the way the school system does it. We're capable of learning way more than what the, the school system spoon feeders in those levels, but it's still levels to learning. But again, if I'm a parent. I'm not going to take out certain information, you know, and then give you the, you know what I'm saying? Because again, and, and and then you see the insanity of parenting, the way it become like why parents lie to us about Santa Claus and they, you know, and say lie, but you know, they go along with these little stories and all this because they, you know, uh, how can I say, the insanity of America or Babylon or the society has just, you know, infected them so they spread that shit to us you know as children and you know it's not uh nothing to hate or get mad at your parents because it's you know it's it's divine order everything is divine order and you pick the situation so it is what it is but again it's just uh 
you know, getting into the deepness of the information, you know, uh, the Bible is useful, but it's, uh, it's just as harmful as it could be useful. Like it is, uh, it is very deceiving, you know, and I, and, and two, and let me share this too, and this speaking from, of course, the reality of it, but also you gotta gotta be aware with getting information from certain people. You know, as I'm speaking on this, and that's why I always step back from my little, you know, my little rantish vibe about it and be like, you know, but to each his own, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm speaking too from a place where I've been scorned by the by I've been scorned by Roman Catholic religion, you know what I'm saying? So when I speak on that vibe, you know, it's gonna it's gonna have somewhat of my perspective on it, you know what I'm saying? It's not just I'm extremely neutral in presenting this information. Nah, I kinda still got like my vibe to it in essence, you know, like that that uh that inner kid that felt bamboozled by my parents telling me <laughs> to go to catechism and thinking that, you know, that way was the only way or that way was, you know, the way that should be. You know, I'm 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 definitely uh that's that's why I'm not so uh you know into the Bible as far as like still sitting there and breaking it down like which I want to get back into that because I feel like again I spoke to this on past videos you know uh you don't want to take a position on anything you still want to be neutral you know so I still maintain that neutrality towards the Bible I don't you know dislike it or like you know it's, it is what it is you know what I'm saying uh. I, just being a person that was taught to deal with it so much growing up and knowing that there's so much information outside of it, I just rather deal with the information outside of it and the ancient stuff that predated it. You know, I rather know where the Bible got its blueprint from than actually sit around still interpreting the Bible, you know what I'm saying? And again, to each his own, but that's just what, you know, how I feel about, about dealing with it for myself and my group. Peace. Happy now. Now the vibrate, of course. Not going too far in the future. Not going too far in the past. Right now.